Thank you so much. So my name is Irene Maganga. I'll be moderating this session today. We have our presenter, Ovin Nyakango. Uh, before joining Aga Khan University to pursue his master's degree in education, uh, basically in language and literacy, Ovin had been a teacher of English and literature and director of studies at St. Bakita Girls Secondary School in Karano. Ovin has a passion for integration of ICT computer in teaching and learning. Currently, he's a teacher of English language and literature at my Mahui High School. Ovin, thank you so much for being with us today. You are welcome. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as you've heard, my name is Ovin Yakango, and as, she's rightly, as she rightly put it, I am a teacher of English at my Mahiu Girls Secondary School. The school is in Kenya, in Nakuru County, just in the outskirts of Nairobi. So I'm going to, let me first of all share my screen. I hope you can all see my screen. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for joining in this presentation. And we're going to learn and share a lot together. I'm going to take you through <clears throat> a learner-centered method of teaching, specifically a method of teaching called uh, flipped classroom. That is the use of the flipped classroom approach in the teaching of English. And um, before I begin, I just want us to do a bit a warm up, a warm up activity. I hope you are psyched for it. I have a riddle for you here. So maybe you can attempt. So the riddle goes, you see a boat filled with people, yet there isn't a single person on that boat. How is that possible? Uh, so I can get a few people shoot answers in the chat. Irene, maybe you can monitor the chat. Yes. Okay. So thank you. And I must say I'm, I'm very happy. I can see. So can I have a few guesses? You see a boat filled with people, yet there is, a, there is no single person on that boat. How is that possible? Are we together? Mm, can I have at least one guess and then we can proceed? Ah, yes, they can see it. Oh, wow. Rafael, Rafael Shinenga has it. A round of applause for Rafael Shinenga. He's, he's right. There's no single person on the boat because all the people on the boat are married. That is good, Rafael. So thank you very much. Um, as I said, we're going to talk about the flipped classroom approach in the teaching of English. And... The screen is not moving. Allow me to, I don't know, for some reason, the screen is not moving again. Okay, let me share the screen again. Stop share and share again. Okay, fine. So, um, so to understand, I want us to first of all understand what we mean by a flipped classroom. What is a flipped classroom? And to understand a flipped classroom, I want us to under first of all understand what happens in a conventional classroom, or let me call it a traditional classroom. So we have learners in school, and then uh, they are probably seated neatly in rows, facing the teacher, the teacher is in front of the class, uh, delivering content. 
And in most cases, we deliver content using the lecture method. So you have content delivered at school. And then after the teacher has delivered the content at school, the teacher gives learners an assignment or what we call homework to go and try at home. <clears throat> and if it's a boarding school, maybe they will try it on their own when the teacher is not in class. So you have content delivered at home and content delivered at school. And then the learners are given work or homework to go and do at home. So that is the traditional classroom. In a flipped classroom, you have content delivered at home in the form of a video or a reading material, or you can even have a podcast. And then when the learners come to school, as a result of delivering the content at home, you free up the class time. So during the lesson, you the content that you have you'd have stood in front of the learners to teach, you have already taught it. You have already you have already, the learners have already been exposed to it through either a video, a reading material, or it can even be a podcast. And then as a result, you have a freed up class time where the learners can work on problems or the learners can do uh, homework. Pardon, is there a question? Okay. So in a flip classroom, content is delivered outside class. And then as a result, you free up the class time for, for the learners to work on the homework, to work on the problems inside the classroom. So the aim is, instead of using the traditional classroom where you have the teacher teaching in front of the class, in our case, our lessons are normally 40 minutes, you have the teacher lecturing students for 40 minutes, you free up and give it to the learners prior, that is before they come, they come to class. And as a result, you have a freed up 40 minutes for you to engage in active learning, okay? Um, now, for some reason, the screen again is not moving. Just a minute. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so this is an example of a flip, flipped classroom. So in a flipped classroom, the teacher is not everything. The teacher is not the center of, you know, there's a sage on the stage. You have now students uh, debate, you know, it makes you less of a teacher, you become a facilitator of the learning process. So your work will not be to, to stand in front of the class and lecture the students, but you assign them tasks. They can be working in groups. They can be doing role play. They can, they can be doing presentations. You can even have peer teachers you know, engaging in, because as a result of the freed up class time, okay? So um, bef now, why flip a classroom? And one of the reasons why we should flip our classroom or why we should uh, engage in active teaching or learner-centered methods of teaching. Recently, I did a study on the same. And I remember one of the questions I was asking my learners is, what do you like about your English lessons? And then I also asked the vice versa, what don't you like about your English lessons? And it was very interesting. Uh, the learners told me what they do not like about their English lessons is when the teachers stands in front 
front of the class and, and teachers and teachers and teachers the entire time. Okay, that means and what do they like when they're given a chance to participate in class? So what does that tell us? We should give our learners a chance. We should, you know, take the back seat and allow them to take the lead in the teaching. <clears throat> After applying this method of teaching, some of the responses that I was getting from, from the learners. Uh, um, some learners are saying this method of teaching makes one to participate and also to become more active during the lesson as compared to where the teachers reads everything from the book and makes many students to sleep during the lesson. Um, another one said, I think it's a very good idea and fascinating in the sense that we as students are able to engage more and help each other out. And the watching of the video is a fun learning activity. A another one said, um, yeah, I personally, I personally, I personally read by observing and the fact that you have introduced technology device in the class, it has helped a lot. Then another one said, it is more understandable rather than the teacher coming to class and talking about a certain topic and then going. More responses. One gets to understand better. Some of the students who are shy to ask questions can ask fellow students and get to understand. So it's important that we know that there's learners who are shy in our class. And the fact that we are in front of them lecturing, we will only move with the first learners. But when we give them a chance to do a group work, for example, even the shy ones who are not able to face us and ask a question, they can ask their peers a question. Another learner said, yes, because no offense, but when there's a teacher and the teacher is apparently using a textbook, I really start dozing. So it is hard, uh, that's another response. So it is hard for me to doze off or fall asleep as this method seems interesting and, and fun to me. Interesting responses from, from the learners. Um, now, um, another reason why we should flip our classroom or why we should employ more of the active learning methods. Research has proved that <clears throat> people generally remember 10% of what they read and they remember 90% of what they do. So what does this tell us? 90% of our teaching learning process should be where students are having a hands-on activity. 90%, you know, a, a larger part of our lesson should not be spent as standing in front of the learners and lecturing, but a larger percent of our teaching learning process should be having the learners do the activities on their own in groups, collaborate with each other, have a debate session, have a role play, and among other things. And according to Bloom's taxonomy, um, we have remembering, which is the lowest level of learning, and then we have the highest level of learning is creation. So in, sorry. Uh, sorry. Maybe Irene, you can help mute. So according to Bloom's taxonomy, as I was saying, you have uh, the levels of learning. And in a flipped classroom, you allow the lower levels of learning that is remembering and understanding happening outside the classroom. And then now when the learners come to class during your lesson, you have freed up the class time for you to engage in the higher levels of learning that is creation, evaluating, analyzing, and applying. Like um, recently, I, in one of my classes, what, what I, I, I did recently, I, I had, I prepared a video, I was teaching uh, literature, and then I was teaching characterization. I was teaching the character traits of a book that we are doing. So what I did, I gave the learners the task of, I prepared a video of some of the traits of the characters, and then, during the class time now, I asked the learners in groups to prepare a short podcast of the character traits of the characters. And what they came up, came, up, came up with was very interesting. 
So that is what we are calling the higher level of learning creation. You know, learners are able to create their own content. Learners are able to evaluate. Learners are able to analyze in class with their peers. Um, where does um, okay examples of the acting active teaching methods that you can employ in a flipped classroom? Um, one of it is role play. Uh, you can have you can see there's a uh, someone's telling me my, my my voice is a bit low. Can you hear me, Irene? Yes. Am I audible? Am I audible? enough yeah okay thank you okay thank you so examples of the active teaching methods that we can employ as uh, after freeing up our class time um remember i started by saying in a flipped classroom you take the lecture part of the content outside the class so you have freed up class time to engage in active teaching methods so you really need to plan on how you're going to utilize the time that you have. So you can have role play, you can have, you can have group discussions, you can have game-based teaching, you can introduce, you can introduce a game in the class and learners really like this. You can have debate, you can have peer review, you can have peer teaching where you have the learners teaching themselves. You can have one of the learners take learners through the content and you know they understand each other more than when you are actually teaching them you can have a think pair share activity and, and 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 the like now um what is the theoretical underpinning of of the flipped classroom approach so the the, the flipped classroom approach um borrows heavily from constructivism from the constructivism theory by Lev Vygotsky. So according to this theory, learners construct knowledge rather than just passively take in information. So this is one thing that I, I, I want my colleague teachers to, to remember. Knowledge is constructed, is constructed. And the learners are able to construct knowledge as opposed to when they just sit passively in class, you know, they sit neatly, uh, in rows facing the blackboard, listening to the teacher. Very little learning is going on in such a situation. But when they are engaged actively in small groups, you have given them an activity to do in groups to construct, that is how they're able to understand the process even more. And further, according to Vygotsky's constructivism theory, learning is a social process, you know? Um, that is where we should encourage the group work I'm talking about. Um, encourage the learners to work together to construct knowledge. And then um, further according to the theory, teachers should be, as, should be facilitators to assist learners to construct their own knowledge. You know, the learners are not empty vessels for us to, to come and transmit transmit knowledge, but we should be facilitators of the teaching and learning process. So uh, further, according to uh, this theory, teaching is a social activity where peer interactions, you have teacher-student interaction, uh, help in construction of knowledge. And th th there's one particular, one interesting concept of the constructivism theory uh, what Vygotsky calls the zone of proximal development, you know, that is the difference between what the learners are able to do on their own without any help and what the learners cannot do. So that difference in between there, what the learners are able to do without any help and what they're able to do, what they cannot do. So the zone of proximal development emphasizes the key role that is played by social interactions and participation in the class for knowledge creation. So you have the learners um, getting to learn, you know, there's a concept that they don't know, but you have a more knowledgeable other person in that classroom and they can be able to assist, assist each other. 
Um, now, what are the benefits of a flipped classroom? So one of the things, one of the advantages of employing a flipped classroom is it takes care of individual learning styles, okay? So one, one thing that, um, that we need to know, and I'm sure we, we are already aware, uh, is that learners have different learning styles. Even us as teachers, we have different learning styles. And in most cases, when we employ lecture in the classroom, we are assuming that all the learners are learning at the same pace. And that is not the case. In most cases, when we are employing the lecture method, we are only moving with the first learners. Okay? So, you, you know, you go to the front of the class, you lecture, and then you ask, are we together? Have you understood? Everybody says yes, you move to the next topic. So it's only the first ones that you move with and you leave a large bunch of the learners behind. But in a flipped classroom, the fact that you have, you, you pre-record your lesson and the learners can see your lesson in the form of a video, they have a chance of, you know, pausing the video, pausing the content that you are giving them. If it is a video, they can pause. If there's a part that they have not understood, they can pause. If there's a part that they need to go back to, they can rewind, you know? So it gives the advantage of, you know, you can imagine the chance of you rewinding your teacher, you know? Something that they, they, they are not able to, to do if you are in front of, if you are in class, okay? And then um, uh, still on taking care of the individual learning style, um, people have defined the flipped classroom as a meta-instructional strategy, okay? Uh, remember we talked about um, having the learners come to class, having interacted with the content outside the class. So you free up class time for a number of active teaching methods, okay? So the group work and all those other things, they can take care of the learning styles of the learners. It also leads to better understanding of concepts. Because as I said, uh, if the learners have not understood the video, they can pause the video, they can rewind the video content. And when they, have, they come to class now, they are delving deeper into the content that you had give, given them. And the fact that you are in class, and, you know, as you have given them the group work, your hands are freed now. You can move around to the class and see who has not understood and camp there and explain to them even better. Um, another benefit is it provides for collaborative learning. You know, the learners are able to collaborate with one another. They are supposed to be able to work with, uh, with one another. And, and that is one of the one, one, one very important skill of the 21st century, the ability to work with one another, the ability to learn from each other. Um, now, um, how do we plan for our flip, our flip classroom? What are the factors that facilitate the use of a flip classroom? So one, one important thing uh, that we need to consider when we are planning for a flipped classroom is we need to plan our lesson very well, okay? So you need to think carefully on how to execute the lesson. And you start by, you know, first having the video content of the lesson that the learners will view prior to coming to class. And then now you need to plan for the activity that the learners will be doing in class that will help you achieve the objective of the lesson. And in a flipped classroom, it is also important that you monitor learning. You know, the fact that you have already given them the content prior and now they're coming to class, having interacted with the content and you have freed, freed up class time, does not free you as a teacher. So as a teacher, you still have to move around and monitor if the learners, if it is the group work that you have given, if it is an activity that you have given, you need to move around the different groups to ensure that the learners are doing the activity that, that you have prescribed them to do. And you need to have a way of making a student accountable. 
um, student accountability is also very important. And what do I mean by student accountability? Remember, you're giving learners content prior. So how do you ensure that they interact with the content before coming to class? Okay, so chances are high. Chances are high, if you're not very careful, the learners will come to class not having interacted with the content. So you need to look for a way of um, ensuring that they come to class having interacted with the content so that they can now engage in active teaching. And one of the ways that I normally do to ensure student accountability is you can give, you can ensure the learners make notes as they watch the video content or you give a quiz, okay? At the end of the, a small quiz at the end of the video content that the learners will access before the class. And then of course you need a bit of technological competence, you know, so that you can create the content for the flipped classroom. Um, some of the challenges of implementing this method of teaching is, of course, ICT infrastructure. Um, yeah, we know um, ICT is still a challenge. The, despite everything now depending on ICT, we still don't have the infrastructure in our schools, but I, we can improvise. And I think we need to, we need to really um, be creative here and just utilize the available resources that, that, that we have. And time, time is another challenge. So a considerable amount of time is required for you to prepare the, the content that the learners will have to interact before the class, to interact with before the class. And it's, it can be time consuming, but the advantage is once you create the content, you know, you can keep using it again and again. That's, that's the advantage. Um, so thank you very much. I have one bonus tip before I, I close and then I, I invite questions. Um, one of the things that we need to do as, as teachers, even if, as we employ this, the various methods of teaching that we deem appropriate is the reflective aspect of teaching, you know? Um, and this is one thing that I employ in my classes. Every, at the end of every term, I, I give learners a plain paper that has three questions. So one of the questions is, what do you like about our English classroom? And the second question that I normally ask, what don't you like about our English classroom? And then the third question is, what can we do going forward? So the, the kind of feedback that you get from the learners will, you know, goes a long way in improving you as, as a teacher. And yeah, thank you very much. So thank you very much. You can see there's a comment here. Thank you very much. Those are my contacts. I now invite any questions. So we can have a discussion. Over to you, Irene. Thank you so much, Jovin. Uh, I see you're having questions in the chat box. Maybe you can stop sharing first. Okay, fine. Thank you. Let me stop sharing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So thank you so much. It is really interesting seeing how much we can do with the students, the role play, and then the discussions and all that. And I think that can be applicable whether you have a small class or a large class. It depends on how the teacher just uh, takes time and plan for it. So guys, if you have any question, please put it in the chat box. I see people are not having questions. Okay.
So there's a question. Uh, Gordon is asking, is it necessary having this having questions of the same nature every time you have the class? Okay, thank you very much for that question, Godwin. Um, is it necessary to have the same nature of questions for every class? Um, it is, I don't think it is necessary to have the same questions. You know, this now calls for our creativity as, as teachers. And the fact that you are not, it will be different topics every time, isn't it? So, and I'm sure different topics will have now different questions. Okay, so you have the learners access the content before coming to class in the form of a video or a reading material. And then now when they come to class, you give them questions in groups to answer. So there can be different questions every time. Godwin, I hope I've answered your question. And then we have another question. How can students in rural area partake in this method of classroom where there is no network? <laughs> ah, very good question, very good question. Um, how can students in the rural area use this method when they, where there's no network? Um, uh, I think it is still doable. Uh, you don't really need network. If you have, do you have a computer? If you have one, yes, you can have the video content in a flash disk, okay? And it can even be a PowerPoint presentation, you know, you presenting in, in the form of a PowerPoint, the same content that you'd have stood to, to teach them about. You have it in a PowerPoint, in a flash, so you wouldn't really need net network to do that. Unless you're talking about maybe not having the computer. Or you can even have an audio recording. Okay. Hello, everyone. Just to say thank you uh, for attending this session. This is among the session that we are running with Delta Tanzanian English Language Teachers Association. Uh, we appreciate your presence. We are going to upload this in our YouTube channel under the Facebook page so that those who miss the session they can go through uh flipped classroom is very important as now we are integrating technology in our teaching and therefore this has been uh very crucial and very important at this era to train teachers on the use of technology so thank you and uh i wish you all the best and thank you our presenter of today mr ovin Otherwise, thank you, Irene. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and have a great day. And don't forget to join us in our next webinar. It will be announced on our Facebook page as well as Instagram page. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, we can pitch on our video, no problem and wind up the session. Thank you to Maini Olsen. Thank you. Yes, I can see you, Madam Mutui. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Oh, I'm not going to